welcome. Uh, today we're going to be talking about consciousness and um, we're carrying on from our conversation that we had um, last time when I spoke with Dr. Shelley Evans. We were talking about raising our consciousness levels. And in our conversation, which you will find in the videos list, we talked quite often about going into the silence and the stillness and how that is so important when we are trying to raise our consciousness. And obviously raising our consciousness is beneficial for many aspects of our lives, for healing and just for general, um, you know, life going smoothly. So we're, today we're going to really unpack this idea of going into the stillness and the silence and why that's so important. So perhaps Dr. Shelley, um, welcome once again. Perhaps we can just begin by talking about why we are um, encouraging people to go into the silence when they want to raise their levels of consciousness. Well, who couldn't you, who couldn't benefit by having greater access to more to more information at your choice. But if you just think about it, 93% of the function of our DNA is light and sound reception and transmission. So photon, phonon reception and transmission. This is not just, in, yes, it's intracellular cellular communication, but beyond that, we create a resonance within our own body. And what I'm referring to here is the heart basically the circulatory system creates a resonance that then we have an impact on the environment around us. And we all know what it's like to walk into a room where somebody's angry, you feel it right away. But when you can go into that place of, of stillness, even in a noisy room, you hold that and you can lift and entrain the energy fields around you. Look at everybody's what, 86, we hope at least percent water. Mm -hmm. so, so you can see that right there, how important it is. It affects every aspect of our own personal life, but yet it also impacts everything in our environment. Think your family, think your, your social life, your work, your career, if, you, if you're in an office, you know, how important this is to to learn how to tune into that silence within you mm -hmm. yeah and there's various different methods that people can use for going into the silence i think often it's it's helpful maybe to start off by listening to some relaxing music just to try to sort of calm yourself down maybe doing some deep breathing exercises that's really helpful you can almost feel the calmness coming over your body because i think sometimes we're, we're just so busy and we're so tense <laughs> that we need to um first of all prepare ourselves to go into the silence so those kinds of things the music the deep breathing can relax us sufficiently to allow us to uh, silence our minds which is uh, so difficult to silence the mind don't you find you, you you actually named a really valuable technique there and that is the breathing and it's not that there's so many wonderful breathing techniques, but by virtue of the fact that now you're focused on your breathing, you've stopped the monkey mind because now you're actually focusing on the breathing and what you want to do once you're, you know, maybe you're going to start off counting five in, hold five. It doesn't even matter. Feel your breath. That's the point. Just feel your breath coming in and feel the joy of it exhaling. You know, this is almost like drinking water when you're super thirsty. It can be so pleasant. Mm -hmm. So you can see just those two examples, just with breath work alone, mm -hmm. instantly, yeah. instantly has an effect. Yeah, yes, it doesn't take long at all. I found that just uh, breathing in for eight and holding mm -hmm. for the count of eight, and then releasing on the count of eight. So you're doing everything quite slowly. Just do that two or three times. Gosh, mm -hmm. you can feel it. I mean, your limbs feel heavy and your torso. You, you can really feel it in your body. And as I say, it really doesn't take 
take long to get there. So yeah, that's really important to do to prepare yourself first to go into the silence. So why do we need to actually get to the silence? What is there? Well, you know who we are as human beings? We are super conductors. We can communicate with the divine. Okay, some people might not want to think of it in those terms. However, what we're tapping into is the is the higher, what, what would we say? The pure source energy. You can look at it like that. It's divine order. But this is who we are. Think of it like tapping into light. Who doesn't want to feel lighter? You'll have greater clarity or love. This is even just compassion for yourself. So we can give all kinds of lip service to love, but that's not where the joy is. The joy, the natural experience, the bliss, aha, in your body comes when you feel it. And, you know, you don't have to go out and wait for somebody on the external environment of your home or your work to shower you with love. This is what we do for ourselves to stay within that loving presence. And for many of us, we'll recognize that as being in the presence of the divine because that's what love is. Mm -hmm. Hey, you mentioned one time Christ letters. Now, I don't remember, but why don't you uh, refresh my memory about that? Yeah, so I, Sounds think, appropriate. Yeah, go yeah, ahead. I found these texts, which I found really interesting, called the Christ letters. Mm -hmm. um, they're, they're on YouTube, so anyone can, can look them up. And you can also do a PDF download of them as well. So they're, they're really quite interesting. There's about nine of the letters, and they're quite quite long um, um but letters five to nine have got sort of instructions in them for how to really develop your your consciousness and to move higher into in consciousness oh. and i have a little bit here just to to read yeah. to you, you yeah. might find it interesting um it says that universal consciousness remains forever within equilibrium so that again is that silence Mm -hmm. And the stillness, isn't it? The equilibrium, like nothing's moving, everything's balanced. Mm -hmm. So that, that's where universal consciousness remains forever there. Mm -hmm. In that self-same space, in frequencies of vibration, the primal impulses of activity, which are described as bonding and rejection, those are the two impulses of activity. They work together in the visible dimension, appearing to our senses in the form of electromagnetism. Oh. So when you think about it, we know from our, our scientific studies that we are electromagnetic beings. Our thinking is electric. Our feelings are magnetic. So it's these um, forces working together, which kind of constitute who we are and these forces have come from that equilibrium that is pre that is universal consciousness right so we need to be aware of these forces and we can really be aware of them through through thinking as i say which is electric and feeling which is magnetic think of our thoughts and our feelings we can be aware of these. We have that capacity to be aware of them. And mm -hmm. if we can bring them into some kind, some kind of harmony and harmonize them, mm -hmm. then we're going to be working um, more um, coherently, as it were. Because I, I think back to all this positive thinking stuff, you know, um, mm -hmm. people say, just think, have positive thoughts and this will happen and that will happen. But right, right. I feel like they're only only tapping into half of the the reality, half of what we really need to be doing. We need to concentrate on the feelings as well, because this is the magnetic part of, of who we are. So it's bringing those forces together. So if we can align them. So when we go into the silence, if we can um, have that thought and, in, and intention of aligning them, and wanting to connect with the universal consciousness, then we're, we're setting ourselves up for, for success. 
Intention is a really key point there. Uh, yeah. And what, what you said gives us actually the realization that we can be accountable and create, literally, world peace. Because you know that 7.5, it's like 6.8 to 7.5 hertz. This is the frequency that you're referring to. This taps us into the Schumann frequency. And now if we look at resonance on the planet, the Schumann frequency is... We, it's a communication, a biofeedback between humans and our planet. So I know many, many people can understand and view the planet as an entity, a specific mm. entity, and know that you can communicate with this, this wonderful, beautiful being. But even if you don't think of the planet as anything other than rocks and minerals and uh, dirt and trees and animals you know still you're having an impact on mm. on the betterment of humanity and i think that w that's got to be the awareness that we build on because i think people are feeling so frustrated and so so disempowered that they don't even realize they hold the power in their thought yes and it's that thought that sets up the resonance in the circulatory system as i was explaining earlier yeah. but it likewise ripples out and has that direct correlation through the human frequency yes and and that's what's so beautiful about it isn't it that we can yes it's ourselves you know so often people feel powerless that things are happening to them right um but they have the power within themselves mm -hmm. um through their thoughts and their feelings and their intention as you say that's a really a key point too having that intention um to to rise in consciousness and to do the right thing and to you know, um, live a life that's harmonious and peaceful and joyful. So you need that intention too, which I mean, most people, those are the kinds of things that they would want to, you know, achieve in life. Yes. And, right. And when you're empowered, you don't even wreck. This is, this is really expanding our boundaries. You know, this is when you're inspired and enthusiastic and of course I can do this right but it's so healing on many many levels mm -hmm. relationships but also disease and illness and distortions within our physical body within our communities and so I think wow what a valuable topic to share mm -hmm. is just just let let our viewers and our listeners and our friends just experiment with it. How do you feel before you go into a five minute meditation, do some breath work and have the intention that you are holding a beautiful, positive thought and know that when you come out of meditation, you feel the power within your body has lifted. But you know, there's something else too about this. It's not all about what are they say, like, you know, unicorns and rainbows or something like this right because if a, a negative disempowering thought is there you want to know what that is you don't want to just shove it into the closet and then spend the rest of your life with your back up against the closet so it doesn't ever get to come out you don't want to sweep it under the carpet these are valuable pearls mm. that that can come about in in this breath work or in a meditation or when you think you're going to be silent and then all of a sudden you have all of these thoughts for people just to be aware of the thought and watch them without letting it drag you into some deep dark rabbit hole they can become aware of some very valuable val valuable pearls for which then they recognized oh here's an area where I have not loved myself here's an area where maybe I have judgment about something or someone or myself so yeah. So you can't go wrong, <laughs> whether yeah. you have a beautiful, blissful experience or you you see what's ahead of you that deserves to be cleared. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think so much when, game. Yeah, when we give ourselves that opportunity to enter the silence, mm -hmm. it means that we're creating space and opportunity within our minds, within our beings mm -hmm. to receive downloads. And those downloads might be sometimes highlighting things within ourselves that are preventing us.
from moving mm -hmm. higher in consciousness. So it might be like you say, some kind of whatever judgmentalism, hatred, mm -hmm. anger, mm -hmm. or whatever, you know, these kinds of things might come to us. And instead of feeling um, defeated, if that happens, just right. see it as no, this is being highlighted as something that you need to be aware of and uh, conscious of so that should should you enter a situation where you're perhaps feel you're going to get over angry or something like that. Mm -hmm. If you're aware of it, then you can take steps to choose a different path. So, yeah, I agree. Those kinds of downloads can come to you and they shouldn't be seen as negative at all, but rather positive because it's almost like you have to sweep out the the debris yes, <laughs> before yes. the, the new light can really fully take hold. And we don't want to throw the baby out with the bathwater. We don't want to just sweep everything out. There's pearls. There's value in there. Or you wouldn't have been there in the first place. You know, this is divine order. Yes. Yes. Sure that we receive all the gifts all, so that we can fulfill our destiny and become so satisfied with our life. Mm -hmm. And then you look around and suddenly the world is an entirely different place because your perception of it is different. Mm hmm. Perception you know, this is everything. Yeah, this is. Yeah. And so this is also about boundaries. When you have thoughts that are taking you down a place that's amplifying anger or frustration or disempowerment, it's still up to us to be accountable, to put you grab those reins and say, OK, I'm at, I'm actually the one in charge of my thoughts here. And is this thought serving me? Is this taking me to a place that's going to be valuable in helping me to become the very best that I can be? Mm -hmm. And maybe it's exploring an issue. And then the answer is yes. But quite likely we get on this this. Uh, almost like one of those hamster wheels, right? Say you're driving and somebody cuts you off and then it, it can amplify. So it's really up to us, beholden to us to, to actually be in charge of our thoughts. Mm -hmm. It's so simple. Mm -hmm. It's really simple, but it, it, the, the concept is simple. It. <laughs> the concept is simple, but doing it sometimes, you know, difficult. And I think you, you just sort of made me think then about the need to have that pure intent that we've got to be really serious and really yes. desirous, strongly desirous mm -hmm. of um, moving higher in consciousness so that, for instance, when a situation does appear, occur in our lives and we're mm -hmm. used to going the low road, as it were, right. we now really want to sincerely take a higher road and approach that in a more loving way and perhaps intelligence as well an intelligently loving way um which perhaps will demand you know strength of character and will and determination on our part depending on how deeply ingrained these things may may be within us but i think that is so important that we really have to have that sincere a longing within our hearts as well until it becomes a habit. I mean, you can develop these positive habits just as easily as we can develop negative habits. So if your habit is that you automatically assess the situation in terms of the measuring stick is, is this taking me to the place that's going to reflect who I want to be or my highest, you know, most empowered self, mm -hmm. then, then great. And if not, maybe we could do a little course correction and make a choice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. Um, because it's a journey, isn't it? You know, it's our, it's our path uh, in life. And we, we mm -hmm. it, our life is just a series of choices, isn't it? Yeah. Every day we yeah. make different choices. So, yeah, just making a new choice a different way, especially when something has become ingrained, it takes a little effort sometimes to switch and then something else will become more of a habit and more ingrained and become more a part of who we are just naturally you know yeah so we yes. can develop our characters and um, to what we want them to be in this yes. way 
Yeah. And this empowerment that comes by actually taking the reins and making a choice, then the choice can be expanded out into what we refer to as astral hygiene. For instance, if you've just eaten at McDonald's, I wouldn't know. I don't do that. If you've just eaten something that's not good for your physical body, it's going to be a lot more difficult to try and get to that happy place because inside your body, it's already reacting physiologically. In the same way, if you deliberately engage in, who knows, like some kind of quarreling or whatever, of course, that's going to, so you can see even something as simple as wearing organic fabric or getting into nature, I can't emphasize how important that is because it enables you to be in that harmonious place to start with. You're not fighting to get back to the launch pad. You're already there and you can take off. Mm -hmm. I guess that's going back to that Schumann resonance, you know, the the planetary frequency vibration. And when we're out in nature, we can become more attuned to it. Mm -hmm. I mean, Mm -hmm. we are a part of nature, but because of modern life, we we sometimes feel divorced from it. So it's important to get out there amongst the trees, the crashing waves and realize the, you know, the beauty and the oneness of it all and that you are actually a part of it, all yeah. working together as one great right. whole. Yes, mm-hmm. beautiful. Anyway, um, another little passage I had for you is from um, The Secret of Light, which is by Dr. Walter Russell and a lot mm-hmm. of people who follow our subscribers to my channel Mm -hmm. follow Dr Walter Russell's work and um, yeah I'm sure they'll enjoy this Um, all of the power of the ocean is in its stillness whether expressed or not so again that's you know in line with what I read from the Christ letters about this equilibrium it's there Mm -hmm. and so it's the oceans whether it's expressed or not and likewise all of the power of light is in the stillness of its knowing, whether expressed by light waves or not. So that is where the power is. It's in the stillness. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, it's just reinforcing what we've been saying, that the power is there, but we do need to somehow tap, tap into it. And this is why we stress the need to go into the silence and into the stillness. I mean, even the even the rhythms of our body uh, teaches us that we need rest and stillness. Every night, our bodies lay themselves down for eight hours or, or so in, you know, relatively still compared to how it has been during the day in order to recharge the batteries and to give the body the power that it's going to need for the next day to do whatever it it has to do. So it's inbuilt within us that we have to find the stillness in order to um, live vibrantly. Yes, how beautiful. Well, you'll have to include... um... The link or something in our in the notes in this this in the description box for this video because I think that is so insightful and inspiring, and you can just feel it lifting you just just listening to you read it. That's really lovely. Yes, yeah, and I think you know people tend to think of space, silence, stillness as powerless mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. it seems like a nothingness, mm-hmm. but it's actually the opposite. It is powerful. It really is. That is where the power lies. Yes. And just if we could touch briefly on space now. Again, um, you know, scientists have discovered that space is not empty. It's full of what they call dark matter, dark energy. Unidentified, we'll say. (laughs) Sorry? Unidentified. They have unidentified yeah, what's there. They, uh, they don't have the tools, do they, at their ex- disposal to really say what, what is there within space. But they know that something's there. We know that all the visible matter has sprung from the space. That mm-hmm. is where the power was for it to be here. Mm-hmm. So that teaches us again um, that this, those quiet places are where the power is. And why is it still um, unidentified? Because the measuring stick that they're trying to use to measure is not 
is not the correct measuring stick. The measuring tool is these divine human bodies and what extends beyond the physical body of, of who we really are, our mind, where we share in the consciousness of the oneness that is. This is the energy, the frequency of love. We can look at it like light and we can break it all down and talk all about the, the wavelengths and so on. But that's, that's really what we're describing here. And so it's not a mechanical, it's not a mechanical measurement, but yet we all know it within our bodies. We all know you, you, you can have non-local messages you know, this is the mm -hmm. superluminal. You can think of somebody and they're feeling at the moment you're thinking of them and mm. vice versa. Yes. And so just to reclaim who we really are, mm -hmm. I think would make the world entirely mm -hmm. different overnight. Mm -hmm. And knowing that that power, power lies within us, we know yes. that every, every atom of our body is 99% space. The power, yeah. the power is there, and we've um, we've already mentioned how when we bring our thoughts and feelings into equilibrium and into harmony, then we're able to to touch on um, more um, efficiently into the silence of our minds that can then benefit our bodies and and how we live. So yeah, I think this has been a fascinating discussion. Thank you so much for bringing out all of those really important yeah. points and hopefully we've inspired people to to try and reach the space but uh, and the silence but i do want to just say that if you've never done it before it sounds quite easy you know just go and sit and be silent but your mind is just so active it is quite tricky initially so do please listen to some relaxing music do some deep breathing exercises and i have a meditation video um, on my channel that you can look up and it's only 10 minutes and that would just help to calm you sufficiently to enable you to touch the space and the silence and if you can only touch it for a few seconds it will have a beneficial effect because um, each day if you keep doing it you'll touch it for a little longer and a little longer and then and then it'll, it'll get easier yeah and there's so many surprises in that space that we're calling empty It'll be really fun. Yeah. The, the, Look for it. Yeah. Feel the, for it. The information that can be downloaded to you because you're making um, an opportunity for it to, to come to you. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's so wonderful. Thank you ever so much, Dr. Shelley. Been My so pleasure. So always. So lovely to talk to you. So you until, until next time, we'll say Thank goodbye you. to everybody. Thanks, everyone, for joining us. Bye. Bye.